Alright. <clears throat> shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, love, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, GMS, who do rule and teach well. It's uh, your brother here, Shmash One uh, Ban Yahawda. And uh, today I would like to speak on this article. Uh, schools are punishing, uh, you know, pronouns and hiding it from parents. So a new report reveals students in the nation's largest school districts are encouraged to change their names. And uh, I'll just call them uh, nouns without parental knowledge, even though those same schools require parental approval for over-the-counter medicine. Reports released by the Department of Freedom Institute for Policy Studies, DFI, found that eight of the nation's 20, uh, nation's 20 largest school districts allow students to use names and, and nouns at school aligned with their identity without parental knowledge and consent, said uh, DFI. So uh, I think the first thing we should do is just take a look at what the DFI uh, even is we should look at uh, who are we? What what do these guys even you know? What do these guys even do so that we can get a better idea here? And, and this entire uh, you know uh, video is gonna be completely off the cuff. You know, I'm gonna you know get more into the news and um, you know apply a little little bit little bit of discipline. You know. Uh, try to you know, at least post something you know I really want to do more than three times a week but you know at least three times a week you know really sit here and try to you know clear things out you know so I can actually post more videos you know because um, you actually do need to focus when you do your other shit in life so then you can have more time to post and research and read and learn and grow so let's see here. We need to look at um, defense of freedom. I'm looking at it on my phone right now, so I don't have to open up a bunch of tabs because I got a bunch of tabs open right now. Okay, so their uh, their group says our mission is to defend and advance freedom and opportunity for every American family, student, entrepreneur, and worker, and to protect our civil and constitutional right at school and works. So they're more of like a school I guess they kind of like fight for rights and like schools and stuff union driven school lockouts during the uh, planned I'm reading at the website right now dfipolicy.org union driven school lockouts during the uh, demic detriments home to America students stand with students and send the big union bosses a message to keep schools open kids have suffered enough well, well that's not a uh, it's kind of a whack ass message, no one, no one's gonna give a shit about that. And fuck, you know, most most people I know, right? Well, at least I'll speak from experience, like being in high school before. Like, shit, they, they would be happy not to have to go to school because that shit is ass, bro. High school was fucking ass. That shit, is, that shit sucks, bro. You had these same districts, including New York City, the Department of Education, Los Angeles Unified School Districts, and Chicago Public Schools require permission to dispense over the kind of medication to students at school at DFI. Um, we don't really need to read the rest. Eh. I actually read a, a, a sizable amount of it, but you, you pretty much uh, get the point. Is the eight of the nation's 20 largest school districts allow for this stuff to happen uh, without uh, parental consent? Um, so we should, uh, you know, get some things on that, right? Uh, this one's my favorite. Um, actually, we're gonna get it out of. The, we're gonna read it on paper and get it, you know, analog here manual style classical style so I can get those neurons connected and uh, you know learn here because it's a skill like any other if you do it you stick with it then I'll get better at it All right so let's see it's 
Um, yep, Z uh, nineteen and uh, fourteen. The Lord had the meal of his spirit in the midst of mouth, and he caused Egypt to err, and they be worked thereof for the drunken man staggered for his vomit. All right, so let's drink, you know, mingle the perverse spirit now. And yes, you'll see it. Perverse spirit, spirit of perversity. We know something's perverse means crooked, you know, out of the way. Um, it's it's off the beaten course, right? Uh, like they call someone a pervert, right? You're you're someone who's acting, you know, irregularly towards the, uh, you know, opposite sex, you know, being weird basically, right? Which you know, I'm not really gonna get into that because you know, uh, men. You know, the woman call just about everything being the pervert nowadays. You just try to, you know, show basic forms of attraction, pervert, you know. I don't need to talk about the gym stuff, you know. Uh, the way I wish him a shot never happened to me. I never, I never been you know, caught out, like, you know, caught out there like that. But then again, when I'm in the gym, man, I'm, I'm fucking, fucking psychopath up in that shit. So I, I don't even fucking look at other people like that. You know, I'm just like honed in what i was supposed to be doing and uh you know that's, that's just the way i do things you know but uh this year perverse spirit is definitely mingled within this place you know it's real really sad too man because like you know, being a young man of all well, like of my own and stuff like oh, okay a young man myself right and like of course like is biological and stuff like I want to be able to like mix you and build a family but shit I can't build no family here man look look at this shit you know and I'm from the city you know I can't raise no kid here so that's the second thing I'm gonna get uh, bring not children in this place in this place which one was it it's Jeremiah I think that was just really uh, just in Babylon, but we'll look at a commentary because I don't know because I haven't read Jeremiah because I've been doing GMS homework and I'm very close to being done. I just did uh, two seven and eight. Um, it was really, really a blessing. The brother out there, I don't really know the brother's name. I've seen him before, of course, because I. Used to stand by the New York camp. Uh, the the brother out there, uh, of runs Classic Kings. You know, he, he made a video going into it, and you know, I, I watched the whole thing. Um, not in one day, just did like twenty minutes here, twenty minutes there. You know, another forty minutes another day, and then I eventually like finished it up. My math is probably wrong there, but I watched a good chunk of it. You know, watched it in chunks and finished it. And uh, I, I took down some notes, put it in my King James, and now I'm good. You know, I can move on to the next thing. You know, really a blessing that he, that he did that because uh, you know he, he put a lot of stuff that I didn't know about in there. You know, so uh, yeah. It was commanded. Either or, um, I'm just going to read it here. Actually, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to give it one more try. We're going to try uh, Bible up here. And uh, let's see what, it, what they say. Yeah, so the whole place of Judea. So he's in, he's in Judah. So, let me see here. In this place in Judea, so I'm just going to read it right now. Uh, this is Jeremiah 16 and 2. Thou shalt not take thee a wife, and I shalt not have sons or daughters in this place. All right, so, but as you that apply here to America as well, you know, even though something happened back then, and it's a context that goes into it, but you're applying it here right now, you know, um, to America, man. Um, you're not supposed to have children in this place, man. Don't make babies here because of what we're reading right here. 
you know, this place is fucking on some other shit. <laughs> they, they on they on some different kind of fucking time, bro. Uh, this this ain't the fucking place to have, you know, children and stuff like that. Well, you know, like you, you know, if you're young, you're like, man, like, shit. I wish I could, man. I wish I I could. You know what I mean, but you can't. You know, it's too bad. Um, coming upon the nation. So let's see here. Uh, Jeremiah timeline. Just so I make sure that we we're, we're getting things right. Okay, so he was active from the 13th year. Yeah, so he was active from the 13th year, Josiah, king of Judah, until after the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of Solomon's temple, 587 BC. So yeah, um, pretty much until you know, the dragging away of uh, you know Israel into Babylon, right? And uh, so on and so forth. I'm not really gonna get all into it because you know, I'll make your brothers wait like an hour, and this is something that I need to look more into myself. Um, let's see if we can find something else here, so we can see if we can get something here. Because pretty much he's saying that there's something, you know, the calamities are going to come in the land, which it did. So this is pretty much, this has to be before uh, the fall and uh, fall of Babylon and stuff like that. Because, you know, the kingdom already fell to Syria uh, sometime early, like around like 16 something something BC roundabout. And then it was like, I think it was like 70 something years or something. And then uh, Judah fell as well, you know. But you, you fact check me on that. It, it, it's pretty much that timeline. Because like 586, I just saw it right there. 580 something in that, in that time range. Uh, that's when uh, Judah fell. You know. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video. Um, kind of like various topics. That went into like some other stuff too. Went a little bit off topic here. But. That's you do. This is how you learn, and this is how I find out that hey, uh, maybe I should go uh, check out Jeremiah or something. You know, go check that out. Go go read that. Uh, so I get a little bit you know, extra stuff here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's always so when you're edified in shalom.